Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving the sample problems that you will find on page number 17. Please turn to it, page number 17. As you know, we did the first five, one through five yesterday. Today, we're going to pick up with number six. Problem is already on the blackboard. We are being asked to add seven and one eighth plus two and 421. The seven is a whole number, two is a whole number, adding a seven and a two is no big deal, that's just nine. We're not going to worry about it right now, we're going to leave that in abeyance. We're going to leave that in abeyance. We learned about abeyance, if you recall, on day number nine of our vocabulary videos, of our vocabulary lessons, day number nine, abeyance. We're going to leave it aside, we're going to put it off until later. Let's, right now, let's just, concentrate, let's just concentrate on adding the two fractions. One eighth and four twenty-four. One. Is it one eighth? It can be, can it? Oh, it's not 21, it's 12, you see? The reason reason I stop myself, okay, listen, 21, 21 is simply 3 times 7, and had it been, had it been 8 and 21, 8 and 21 is absolutely, have absolutely no common factor at all. So in that case, the least common denominator of 8 and 21 would have been 8 times 21. And 8 times 21 not only is a large number, but it's a very nasty numbers and they don't give you something like this in the exam. They are very nice people. They don't give you nasty, ugly numbers. Which is why I start to ask myself that it doesn't look right. 8 and 21, they wouldn't give you something like that. It's not 8 and 21, it's 8 and 12. Actually, this is actually very simple. Now that I realize that I misrode it, it's actually very simple. It's actually very simple. That's actually good news. 4 over 12, let's reduce it. That's simply Divide top and bottom by four is just one third. So we have one eighth plus a third. Eight and a third. Eight and three have nothing in common, therefore the simplest and easiest way to find the common denominator is to introduce eight over here and introduce three over here. Let's multiply the second fraction by eight over eight. And let's multiply this one by three over three. In other words, the common, for, common denominator is going to be three times eight or twenty-four. So here we end up with 3 times 1, which is 3. Here we end up with 1 times 8, which is 8, over 24, and we end up with 11, 24. 11, 24. That's it, we are done. 11, 24, and then 7 plus 2 is 9, so the answer is, the final answer is going to be 9 and 11, 24. 9 and 11, 24. Let's squeeze it in here if you can. 9 and 11, 24. That's it. Because 7 plus 2 is 9, and then 11 24th. Let's go on to next one then, number 7. Number 7. I simply wasn't paying attention. 5 and 2 9. 5 and 2 9 plus 1 and 2 9. Oh, this is also very simple, very straightforward. These are these are baby versions. This is 5 and 2 9 and 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 9. Eh? I, I, I did not make a mistake. That's what it says. It's very simple. 5 plus 1 is just 6. 5 plus 1 is simply 6 plus 2 9 and 2 9. 2 9 plus 2 9. They have the same denominator, so that's just 4 9. That's it. That's your answer. And 4 over 9 cannot be reduced, so it just stays like that. It's 6 and 4 9 is the answer. Let's do number 8. Number 8. Number 8 says 12 and 1 12th. 12 and 1 12th. Or is it 1 21st? Yes, 121. 12 and 121 plus 3 and a third. 3 and a third. Again, 
here we have a denominator of 3, here we have a denominator of 21. If we can convert this into 21 in a hurry, we'll be all set because then we'll have the common denominator. Because adding, adding the 12 and the 3 is no big deal, that's just 15. So how can we convert this 3 into a 21? It's very simple. Introduce that fraction by 7 over 7. 7 over 7 is 1, so we are not changing anything. 1 third is still 1 third. It's just being multiplied by 1. It just happens to be, the one, that 1 happens to be incognito. See this 7 over 7, 7 is 1. It just happens to be incognito. It happens to be in disguise. I'm going to keep digressing here like this for vocabulary. Incognito is something that we learned on day number 42. Vocab day 42. It just means in disguise. It's a 1 in disguise. There you go. So this is simply 1 times 7 which is 7 and over 21. So it's 720. So here we have 12 and 121 plus 3 and 721. You see 1 times 7 is 7. 121 and 721 is going to be 821 and 12 plus 3 is 15. There you go. That's it. We cannot reduce 8 and 21 so it stays like that. That's your final answer. 15 and 821. Let's do number 9. The penultimate one. The penultimate one, the second to the last one. One and two third plus two and a half. Again, this is different than the previous question because in the previous question we just had to convert one fraction in the form of the other. Here we have to work on both of them, so let's do it separately. But we're going to leave one plus two in abeyance, we're going to keep it aside because that's just very simple, that's just three. So whatever we answer we get of two thirds plus a half, whatever answer we have at the end, it's just plus three, that's all. So let's find out, two thirds plus a half, we want the same denominator, this has a two and this one has a three, let's introduce a three on this side by multiplying it by three over three, let's multiply two on this side by multiplying it by two over two. That's it. 2 times 3, 2 times 3, they have the same denominator. So here we end up with 2 times 2, which is 4, 1 times 3, which is 3, over 6, which gives us 7 over 6. We can't leave the 7 over 6 as 7 over 6. 7 over 6 has to be written as 6 over 6 plus 1 over 6. And 6 over 6 is just 1. So this this thing, this whole thing is simply 1 and 1 sixth. 1 and 1 sixth. So that's what this is. 1 and 1 sixth. This is 1 plus 2 which is 3. 3 plus 1 and 1 sixth. So the whole thing boils down to, we need the room. So I need to raise something. So this whole thing boils down to 1 plus 2 plus Two third plus a half, which we just found out is one and one sixteen, one sixth. So the final answer is four and one sixth. One plus two plus one is four. Four and one sixth is our final answer. When did we learn the word penultimate? I believe it was day number twenty-seven, if I'm not mistaken. And if it turns out to be day number twenty-seven, then that will be a clear indication that somebody needs a life. Lucky for me, it is not day number 27, it is day 11. Let's go to the very last one. So penultimate, penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. Problem number 9 was the penultimate problem. Let's do the very last one. Eleven. 11 and 3 quarters plus 13 and 7, 7 8. 13 and 7 8. 
Now, had I not, had I not written it like this, had I left some room here, if I had a fourth or had I left some room, we could have squeezed the whole thing here. I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite it. Plus 13 and 70. Plus 13 and 70. Now, as you can see here, we have a denominator of 8. Here we have a denominator of 4. Let's convert it into 8 by multiplying top and bottom by 2. There you go. And the rest is very easy. This is just 11 plus 13, 11 plus 13, 11 plus 13, whatever that happens to be, plus this quantity here, which, which originally was 3 quarter, but of course 3 quarter is the same as 3 times 2, which is 6, 6 8, which makes perfect sense. 3 quarter would have to be 6 8, because the quarter is simply made up of 2 8. And therefore, a quarter, quarter is made up of 2 8, and a quarter and a quarter is a half, and half is made up of 4 8. If half is made up of 4 8, it stands to reason that 3 quarter would have to be made up of 6 8. 6 8, 6 8 to 3 quarters. Because each quarter is made up of 2 8s. 6 8. So this is 6 8 plus 7 8. 6 8 plus 7 8. We're not quite done. We need a little bit of room. 6 plus 7 is 13. So this is 13 8, which is same as 8 8 plus 5 8, which is same as 1 and 5 8. Because 8 over 8 is 1. So finally, what we get is 11 plus 13. 11 plus 13 is 11, 13, 13 plus 10, 13 plus 10 would have been 23. If 13 plus 10 is 23, then it stands to reason that 13 plus 11 would have to be 24. 24 plus 1 is 25, 25 and 5 eighths. The final answer is, the final answer is 25 and 5 eighths. That was the end of it. Tomorrow we'll do problems dealing with the notion of subtraction of fractions. Subtraction of fractions, they introduced the topic for some strange reason at the very bottom of page number 17. But the actual work starts, the actual work starts on page number 18. We'll do, we'll do the examples that we see there and then we'll tackle the sample problems. And that will take care of subtraction of the fractions and then we're going to move on to multiplication and division of fractions. Okay? Bye now.